Hi everyone, it's Nicole here from My Dear Charlie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my little mini Alice in Wonderland tutorial. Um, I did put on Facebook if, if people would like to see a tutorial on this and I got quite a resounding yes. So here we are. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to split the tutorial into a couple of videos, um, mainly because there are lots of crafters that are new to journal making and haven't tried certain techniques before so I'm going to go through that in this first journal uh, first tutorial sorry so what we're going to do is I'm going to start off by showing you how I make my curved spines um, I absolutely love curved spines it's not a terribly curved spine in this journal um, because I've got the little mini journals in the middle and there's eight signatures I didn't want it really any wider than that it is a one and a half inch spine um, otherwise I would have had to go bigger to allow it to be more curved to to bring it in otherwise it can end up quite squished so I didn't really want it all squished in I want plenty of room to be able to open it up and you could still put a couple of little things in there should you so please to do so okay i'll pop that aside because we need to get some water happening here um as you know these are the signatures that are going to go into it there's eight in total um i'm going to also show after i've um made the spine how to sew them in again this is for the newbies if you know if you've made plenty of journals that's fine you can skip all of that because you know you know what you need to do so I'll pop that aside as well and what I'm going to do is start with this so for this particular journal for the Alice in Wonderland journal like I said I have a one and a half inch wide spine and it is six inches long so as you can see it starts off nice and flat and so what we're going to do I'm going to show you how around them you can use other materials if you like I have seen tutorials where people have used um, like Pringle cans because you've already got that curved can so you can cut that and and use a piece of that um, however I just do it this way because I've got more control of the curve and um, I know it's all going to stick really well without having to put other things on top to maybe mask print that's on those on the packaging. So what we'll do, we'll get started. I'll pop that one to the side as well. And I will pop just a piece of wax paper down. I'm going to make three of these. And I do have some other pieces which will be used for the bands. Um, the reason I have separate pieces, sorry, there's enough for four of those. The reason I have separate pieces for the bands is, I'll just show you, they're actually just a little bit wider, if you can see that. It's about an eighth of an inch wider. Um, the reason being is once you curve that first piece, and then you put the bands on if you use say do some extra of these and cut them across and put them over they're actually going to be too short because once it's curved you actually need that top bit just to be that little bit wider so it will meet up at the edges but again i will show you that as we go along so what you will need is your pre-cut pieces so i have four here you will need some water. Um, this has a bit of glycerin in it. That just helps to soak it into the, the chipboard a bit. Um, by the way, this chipboard here, it is 700 GSM. So actually I'll do it in millimeters because my millimeter ruler is better. So we've got, uh, where's a good one? This is really old, this ruler. It's actually my ruler from school, um, which was mm, many years ago now. Finished school in the 80s. 
Um, so this is just over a millimeter in thickness. This is a really good thickness for the spine. If you go any thicker, it may not hold its shape. It may sort of over time spring back out. So if you want a thicker spine, what I suggest is you do it one of those and one of the slightly wider ones. Then once they're done, then stick them together. I will quickly just show you an example. This is a journal. This is quite a large journal and I wanted a thicker spine. So that's what I did. That's actually just two of the 700 GSM um, glued together and then to make a really, really sturdy spine. Um, and you'll see what I, you know, I just love raised bands. This is actually probably my favourite of the raised bands so far. So I'll pop that back and we'll get started. So, yep, I've got my water. The other thing you'll need is some liquid starch. Um, I've got this Stay Flow. Um, I'm in Australia and this is actually something that you can't get here. Um, I got it, I can't remember if it was off Amazon or eBay. It was, oh my gosh, it was quite a while ago. Um, and I think this one bottle is going to last me a lifetime. So I just put some in a tiny little bowl. Um, but here in Australia, I think you could probably use the spray one maybe just spray that into a little bowl let it liquefy and then you'll be able to paint it on so what we need to do is we need to wet these you want them wet quite well but you don't want them like absolutely sopping wet um, you still need to be able to handle them without them falling apart so what I do is I give that a shake like I said that's just water with a bit of glycerin in it and then I'm just going to spray those. You'll see that they look quite wet, but that water soaks in quite quickly. And then I just flip them over. And I do the same on the reverse side. And it's always best if you're doing this, and you can, depending on what you're putting them onto, try and do a few at a time. So I'll just flip that back over, because as you can see, that's all soaked in to the other side. Then you just want to get your brush and your starch. And you just want to brush that on. So what this will do, when it, as it dries, it's really going to stiffen the um, the um, chipboard and will really help hold it in shape so you get that nice curve. Now I did watch a video quite some time ago. I wish I could remember who did the video. Um, now I can't remember if they did both sides, but I do both sides. It's like, well, it can't hurt to have that extra bit of strength from the, from the starch. Okay, so that's all done now. So that's that part done. I'll just pop that aside and get some paper towel to catch all the drips. I always uh, make a pretty good mess of things when I do them. It's 
kind of the fun of it, but then it's always the cleaning up. Now, to get the rounded curves fine, I have a piece of, it is massive, I won't even get it all on on um, the, the camera, but I have a piece of PVC, PVC tubing that I got from a hardware store. Um, I got it from Bunnings. Um, it's a quite a long piece. I think it's at least a metre meet long. And from edge to edge, it is about 82 millimetres across, so 8.2 centimetres. Um, let's see what if it, we get a good one in inches. So it's three and a quarter inches across. So it's quite a quite a large size, and like I said, doesn't give you a really tight curve. When I do want a tighter curve, I actually have a wooden rolling pin that I use. Now what I'm going to do, I'll stand up to do this because I want to try my best to get it all on camera for you um, the other thing you will need I just use stockings to tie them on because you want to make sure they're secured on well um, and tightly so when they dry they again they have that curve so you can sort of see this is quite pliable and bends quite nicely to that I'm going to try and stick to sort of together which I will be able to do I just need to get a piece of this first again if you've got other fabric that you want to use <laughs> use you know use what suits you so to line them up I know this top edge is pretty straight but to start with it doesn't really matter because I'll tighten it as I go so what I do is I just go around and then back out this way. And what I'm going to do is line them both up before I start getting it really tight. Take that top one right to the very top edge. Okay, I hold that one down. Have I twisted that? No. Okay, well, I really made them crooked. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to, usually I do one at a time, but I've got, because I've got the four, I'm just going to try and do them in groups of two across. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I just tie that in a bow at the back make it so it's quite tight and that's that's all right that's all right we can fix that as we go twist it around oh missed that all together nice try though this is probably the fiddliest part of all of it okay so I'm going to straighten them up again because you do want them as straight as possible because you want your, the curve of the spine running nice and neatly from top to bottom. Okay. Okay, so we'll just... Okay, that looks good. Then we're going to get another piece. And we're going to do the same thing, but it will be a bit easier this time because that's all nice and tight and on there. And like I said, if you want to use some other fabric that's a bit easier to handle, you just do what's, what's easiest for you. I actually don't find this easy at all. <laughs> I get a bit frustrated with it at times. But it's what works for me. Okay. 
And I find it dries a bit quicker. I have done it like with some cotton in the past, but it just seemed to take a long time to dry, obviously, because it's got to get through the cotton as well. Okay, and one more. Okay, so that's the first two on. What I'm going to do is stretch that one down to the bottom there. And that one up over there. Because you do want all of the side bits covered because that way it puts even pressure all the way down and you'll have really nice, flat, smooth edges. Like with, Because it's all held down firmly, you won't have any sort of little bumps coming up. Okay, so they are all on now. So I can put that aside. I usually leave these overnight to dry. Um, you'll know when they're dry because they'll be nice and dry to touch. Okay, I didn't use all of that starch, so I will pop that back in the bottle. Waste not, want not. It's only used for my crafting. I'll give that wipe out. That and then I'll just quickly run and put these in the sink. Back in the sink. Okay, back. Just clean this off. Pop the lid on that, put that away. More paper towel. If you um, do, do um, spill a little bit of the water and glycerin, just give it a wipe over because as you know, glycerin's very sticky. You don't want it transferring onto the rest of the work. Okay. So that's that. Right, so tomorrow I will, once they're dry, I will then show you how I do the raised bands um, and get that sort of bit of a curve. You can leave them so they're quite square to the spine. I just like the more finished look of them being a bit more curved over and not having such a um, 
you know, bit that sticks out so much. Which you also, when you have it thicker at the edges, it does make it a bit more challenging to get your fabric onto the spine and not have lots of, um, I don't know, like bits that pucker um, and creases along here. So that's why I do it that way, but I will show you how I do that also. So we can put that to the side. So that will be in the next video when we put the cover together. So now what I'm going to do, for those of you who haven't ventured into sewing your signatures as yet, I'm going to show you how to sew a signature in. Um, some people seem a bit daunted. I've had you know a couple of messages saying, no, I haven't done it before, not sure how to do it. Um, and I have reassured them that once they see how it's done, it's, they'll actually see how easy it is, which is really great. Now, I am missing my... Um, what do you call it? My template. That's not good. I have a template already made up for the holes. And now I seem to be missing it. Oh no, here we go. I have it here. This is one I used for the first one, which is fine. I can use it again for this one here. As you can see, I've already... Oh, sorry, I just knocked the camera. I've already pre-punched all my holes and added my eyelets. Um, they're for the centre... The centre um, mini journals that are removable. I love those little mini ones, they're super cute. Um, so I will give you quick measurements of this. So again, it's the centre of it is one and a half, just under one and a half inches. Um, the reason I do it a little bit less is so that when you glue it all down, these this cover here isn't sticking too far up. I like it to sort of be a bit more in line with the edge of the spine. Um, so that's why I make it just that tiny little bit less. And the, so all up I have made these, where are we? Four and a half inches across and five and three quarter inches. You don't want it as large as the spine because you actually want the pages just to peak above the top and below the bottom. Um, that way you don't see it so much. And it looks more like, I mean, look, you can see it in here because it does have the eyelets for the, um, for the mini journals. But when you sort of look at it that way, you, you don't really see it so much. Um, but you know you can make it the same size if you like that's entirely up to you so I'll just pull my sleeves up hasn't been a warm day you wouldn't even know that it's summer here in Australia um, we have had the strangest summer that I can ever recall um, some days we've had like 17 18 degrees which is Celsius not Fahrenheit for anyone that's watching in America, we're not freezing and snowing. <laughs> um, but it's very unusual for us to have such a cool summer. We've had, uh, you know, a few random warm days, you know, above 30, we've, I think we've had a 40, um, but usually we get quite a few of those. And I'm not saying I miss them because I'm actually not a great lover of heat. Okay, so what I've done, I've got my Final signature, I like to sew from the back to the front. It doesn't, again, it doesn't matter. That's just my personal preference. So each signature has five pages, as in five sheets of paper, which in turn, you get 20 pages front and back, um, which I think is a great, a great amount for a signature. Um, I don't like to put too many pages. Again, it's because I like it to look more like a book 
than say a junk journal. Um, I love junk journals. I haven't made a full junk journal. I've just kind of found that this is more my thing making them this way. Um, because I see, yeah, there's so many ladies and, and there's guys too that just make the most amazing journals full of the most amazing things. Um, but again, it's just not, as much as I love it, it's not my style. So I would really struggle to make something like that. Now, the reason I'm folding this over is when I make my template, it's the same length as the paper. It's the same width as the inner part of the spine um, and then I like to fold it along because sometimes your holes well mine you know they're not always perfectly straight when I do um, poke them through but I know if I fold each one then that is going to be a perfect match for that so once all my signatures are in they're all going to be lined up where they should be now, if you don't have one of these little punching cradles, that's fine. You can just pop it in, you know, into the crease and poke them through, you know, kind of that way. Or if you've got a big book or magazine, just open that up and you can use like the center fold to put that in so you've got something to rest that on. Okay, so I will just do this one. Because like I said, this is this is for anybody who's yet to sort of delve into sewing signatures into their journals. Um, this will just, I think, show them that it's it's actually nice and easy. It's don't be daunted by it because once you see it and once you've done it, it's something that you'll always remember and you'll say, gee, I wish I had have done that sooner. I have my needle and my thread ready. Um, I always use a waxed linen thread uh, for two reasons. I think just because it has a wax on it, it's, it glides in and out through the holes easier. And linen thread is so super strong. Um, so that's why I choose to use linen thread. Now that's, I always mark my top and bottom. I know that there, because it's got the black dots along there, that's the top. And then on the back, you probably won't be able to see that. Um, it's just written in grey lead. I've got top with an arrow pointing up. Again, that way I know they're all going to be nice and lined up once, once they're in. So I start on the centre hole. Um, this is a five hole pamphlet stitch. Um, you could do three if you like, but I just... I like, again, I just like them a bit closer together. I just think it makes them a bit more secure. But again, like I said, that's just, you know, that's just my personal preference. Okay, so we're going to come up through the middle. We're going to go out through the next one. Like so. Leave a tail. So you can tie that at the end. Then we're going to go back in through the back here at the top and in through the top hole in the signature. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to go back down and we're going to go back into this one here. Now I'm not sure if you can see that, but I've j actually just caught the thread. You don't want to do that because when you pull it through, it can be impossible to tighten it. So I'm just going to go back through. I've held that to the side and that way we're not, we're not in through that thread anymore. Now, what we do, we don't need to go back through this one. We're going to go skip the middle and we're going to go down to this one here and then of course through there and then through the bottom right, that side and then we're going to go back through that one there and 
now we'll go back through the middle. So this is where I will tie off this signature. So what I like to do, I just like to make sure it's all nice and taut, not that tight that you start tearing the holes. And then I tie that off. So I do one knot. Well, it's half a knot really. And I probably should have checked this before because I want to use, um, look, I don't know if anyone else does this. I'm kind of fussy for two reasons. Um, firstly, I sell my journals and I want to try and make sure that whoever does buy these journals from me get something that's not going to fall apart or have knots come undone. So I always use a bit of glossy accent before I tie kind of um, like the top part of the knot. Again, you don't need to do this because the wax thread will hold really well, but it's just something that I like to do. Um, just gives me a bit of peace of mind that that knot should last for a long time. Okay, I don't need that much. Okay, so what I do is just a tiny, tiny little dot. As you can see, it's the tiniest amount. I don't even know that you can see it on there. It's just so when I tie these, it really glues, or, you know, pretty much welds that knot together. I'll just get rid of that because I don't need that. And scissors, here we go. And I can be pretty confident that that knot won't come undone and I can just trim that off. So there you go. That's your first signature sewn in. And as you can see, there's just that tiny little bit longer at the top and the bottom. So I will leave this video at that. Um, I did mention before, I did say there was a reason that I was making some extra spines up. Um, and that's sorry for boring you while you sat through and watched those or maybe you just sped through them which hey that's at least we've got that option to speed through bits um, the reason I'm making extras is because I'm actually having a just a little giveaway I just received an email from YouTube saying that I'd had that I had hit 500 subscribers so I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody um, that's already subscribed. And if you're thinking of subscribing to my channel, I'd, I'd love you to be here and see what I do, you know, in the future. So anyway, what I'm, what my little giveaway is going to be, I'll put that aside. I'm going to give away a little kit for some, so you can make one of these yourself. So you'll get an already made spine. You'll get a front and back cover, cut to size and corners rounded. You'll get a piece of Tyvek cut to size so you can put your cover together, which I will show you in the next video. You will also get two pieces of cut cardstock, which is what I use to back my fabric. You might not do that, you might just stick paper in there or something else. Again, that's entirely up to you. But when I use fabric, I wrap wrap it around cardstock and then I pop it, uh, glue it into there. That way it's really, really neat. So you'll get that as well. You'll also get eight pieces of the wax linen thread that I use to sew in your signatures. You'll also receive um, the elastic that you need to thread through to put your little removable journals in. And I'll also be putting in the um, brads to put along there should you so wish to do. And if not, well then you can use them for any project you like. And I will also be including the... Um, hidden hinge 
um, it will be all punched and it will already have the eyelets in it ready for you to put yours together. You of course will need to have a bit of fabric to cover your spine and you will need your pages to or your papers to make your signatures and to do your covers. Um, but it's a good start for someone that may have limited supplies, may not know, you know, where to get this sort of thing from, um, or anybody else that just wants to give this a go. So the way it will work is if you have seen this, um, just put in the comments, just write, um, I'm giving away three sets. Um, so there'll be one for Australia. There will be one for between Canada and US and there'll be one for the rest of the world. So if you're in Australia, just put in the comments Australia. If you're in Canada or United States, put Canada or US. And if you're from anywhere else in the world, just put um, rest, uh, rest of world or international. Just, yeah, something like that. That way I'll know that... Um, it'll be done that way. I just thought it's more fair to give everybody a bit of a shot. Um, so that's what my little giveaway is. I am going to link in the bottom of this video and the next video all of the digital prints that I have used in this journal. And I also will have another link in there. Um, it's called Buy Me A Coffee. Um, I hope it doesn't sound too presumptuous, but... Um, what it is, if you get value out of this video and you would like to help to support me um, so I can buy further supplies and equipment as I go along, um, you can buy me a coffee. Um, I think it is like $4 um, and that will just go back in towards my craft. Um, so if you do, I really appreciate it and if you don't, well, you know, it it's really doesn't matter. I've popped it there just to try and try and um, get a little support towards anything else that I do in future. So while that's drying overnight, I will leave that here and I'll be back shortly with the second video. I'll probably put them on YouTube at the same time, um, but I'll do the second one separately. So... Um, I hope that has helped some of you out. If you're still not sure, just watch through that sewing again. And it is, it's, yeah, once you do it, you won't stop. That's, you know, that's the thing with journals. You make a journal and you just keep making journals. <laughs> um, so anyway, for now, good night. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.